Hey there, welcome to this video. My name is Jan Zuiderduin, founder of LearnSolidWorks.com. And today in this video, I'm going to show you how to model this beautiful endless chain in SolidWorks. And I know it looks very complex, but throughout this lesson, I'm going to show you many different features in order to create this beautiful organic shape. So let's get started right away. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change our background color. So click the drop down menu next to apply scene and select plain white. So now we have a white background and now we're going to create a new 2D sketch on the top plane. So select the top plane, click at the 2D sketch icon and we're going to start this lesson by making a center rectangle. So draw a center rectangle on the left side of the origin and make sure it's set to for construction. Now click OK. All right, now we're going to make sure that the midpoint of a center rectangle and the origin are at the same height. So select them both by holding down your control key and click at make horizontal. We're also going to make sure that those two lines have the same length. So select them both and click at make equal. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a three point arc. Starting at this point right here, up till here, up till here. Now we're going to draw a line from here up to here. And we're going to make sure that those two points are vertical. So select them both by holding down your control key and click at make vertical. Now we're going to mirror this line. So click at the mirror entities and we're going to mirror the line around the horizontal center line in the middle. And click OK. All right, this looks good. Now we're going to create another three point arc starting at this point right here, up to here. This looks pretty good. So now head escape. Now we're going to make sure that those two lines are equal. So select them both and click it make equal. And now we're going to apply a smart dimension from this point up to the origin. We're going to make sure that the length is six millimeters. Now we're going to make sure that the length of this vertical center line is also 6 millimeters. And we're going to make sure that this curve has a radius of 12 millimeters. This looks good. Now we're going to make sure that the distance between those two points is 1 millimeter. And now you can see that our sketch turns fully black, which means it's fully defined. So the sketch is no longer floating anymore. All right, this looks good. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new center line. So click at the center line command and we're going to draw a vertical center line right here. Hit escape to close the center line command. And now we're going to features revolve. And we're going to revolve this shape along the center line right here. So select the center line as axis of revolution and click OK. And now we have created a beautiful revolve. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new sketch on the front plane. So select the front plane, click at the 2D sketch icon, and now we're going to draw a horizontal center line right here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a diagonal a line and, and another vertical line right here. Make sure it's set to vertical. And we're going to mirror this line. So click at mirror entities. And we're going to select those two lines. And we're going to mirror them about the horizontal center line right here. So select the center line and now click OK. All right, we've now mirrored our shape. Now we're going to add some smart dimensions. And we're going to make sure that the angle between those two lines is set to 135 degrees. All right, now we're going to drag to this endpoint right here and we're going to drag it a little bit more outward like this. We're going to make sure that our diagonal lines are fully intersecting with our revolve. And now we're going to make a split line because we're going to project those lines onto the surfaces of our revolve. So click at split line. The type of split should be projection. And we're going to click at the faces to split. And we're going to make sure to select this face right here, this face, this face. And this face right here, this looks good. 
and now click OK. And now we have projected our diagonal lines onto our model. All right, this looks good. So now we have divided our surface into multiple faces. And now we're going to use the delete face option to delete certain faces. We're going to delete those three faces right here. And the last inner surface we don't select because we want to keep that one, but we only want to delete those three faces and click OK. All right, this looks good. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make another split line. This time we're going to select the intersection. So click at intersection and we're going to make sure that selection one is the front plane. And selection two is this blue surface right here. And this will make sure that we're going to create an intersection line on the center of this surface. So now click OK. And now we have created another split line in the center of the surface. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mirror our body along the right plane. So click at the mirror option, select the uh, right plane as mirror face and bodies to mirror will be this main body right here. All right, now we have mirrored our body and now we're going to rotate our body. And therefore we're going to use the move slash copy option. So select the move slash copy option. We're going to select our newly created body and we're going to select the rotate option and we're going to make sure that the X, Y and C are all set to zero millimeters and that the X angle is set to 90 degrees and the Y and the C are set to zero degrees. We're going to disable the copy option and now click OK. And now we have rotated our second mirror body 90 degrees. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click at the move slash copy body again, because we're going to move this body in the X direction by dragging to this arrow right here. And we can set the distance in this box here on the left side to 18 millimeters. Now make sure that the Copy option is disabled and click OK. And now we have moved our entire mirror body 18 millimeters to the right. All right, this looks good. Now we're going to create a lofted surface in order to connect this edge right here with, with this edge right here. And therefore, we're going to click at the start and constraints box and we're going to make sure that the, the start constraint is set to tendency to face and the Strength will be set to 1.5, and the end constraint will also be set to tendency to phase and 1.5. Now click OK, and now we have created a beautiful surface transition between those two surfaces right here. All right, this looks pretty good. Now we're going to do the same thing for the other sides right here and right here, and therefore we're going to use the mirror option. So go to features, click at mirror. We're going to select our front plane as the mirror plane. And we're going to make sure to select our newly created surface loft right here as a mirror body. And now make sure that the merge solids and knit surfaces are disabled and click OK. All right, this looks good. Now we're also going to mirror those two bodies. So click at mirror again, select our newly created bodies. And we're going to mirror them around the top plane. All right, this looks pretty good. All right, so now we're going to fill all the gaps. But before we do that, we're first going to delete a couple of faces. So click at delete face. We're going to select this face right here and this face right here. Now click OK. And now we have deleted those two faces. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to knit all our surfaces together. So select all the faces and click OK. All right, this looks good. Now you can see that our edges are black, which means that they are, they are knitted to each other. Therefore we click at fill surface. Now we're going to fill the open caps. We're going to place our cursor on one edge, Right click, select open loop, 
and this way SolidWorks will automatically select all the edges right here. This looks pretty nice. All right, so now we want to make nice transitions between the surfaces which are in line with our surface fill. And therefore we're going to select a couple of edges and apply a tangency relation in order to create a smooth surface fill right here. Because we're going to apply a tangency relation, we're going to deselect the optimized surface and now click OK. Now, of course, we're also going to create a fill surface for this gap right here. So click at fill surface, select open loop, and now we're also going to select the faces where we want to apply a tangency relation to, so that our edges 2, 3, 4, and 6. Click at tangent, and now click OK. All right. Now we're going to click at the delete phase option because we want to delete this phase right here and this phase right here. So click at delete. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to copy, mirror and rotate our previous surface. So we cannot use the mirror option. So instead of that, we're going to copy our body and rotate it. And now we're going to click at the move option and we're going to select this body right here and this body right here. And we're going to click at rotate. We're going to set the points to zero millimeters. And we're going to change the X direction into 180 degrees. We're going to enable the copy option. And this way we created the second service fill. All right, this is already starting to look like a very interesting shape. Right now we're going to use the knit feature. Now we're going to select all those surfaces and we're going to make sure to knit them together and click at merge entities and create solid. And now we have created a beautiful solidified body. Now we're going to apply a fillet to the edges. So click at the fillet command. Make sure that the radius is set to 0.75 millimeters. Now make sure that the profile is set to curvature continuous. And now we're going to select one of those edges, right click and click at select tangency. And now SolidWorks will automatically select all those tangent edges and do the same thing for the second edge right here. And click OK. All right, we already created a beautiful chain link. But if we look to the rendering, you can see that we have not just one link, but multiple links connected to each other. So therefore, we're going to continue with the next step. We're going to create a new sketch on the front plane. So select the front plane in the feature tree, and we're going to select the corner rectangle command. Now we're going to draw a corner rectangle from here up to here. We're going to select the origin, hold down your control key, and now select make midpoint to connect the midpoint of our line with the origin. Now we're going to make sure that the length of this horizontal line is set to 18 millimeters, and the length of this vertical line will be 28 millimeters. Now you can see that our corner rectangle is black, which means it's fully defined, so now we can close our sketch. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to split our body. So therefore we're going to use the split command, so not the split line command, but the split command. So click at split, and we're going to use our newly created rectangle sketch as the trim tool. And now we're going to click at cut part. And now you can see three resulting bodies. So we're going to select two of them right here. Make sure that consume cut bodies is disabled because we want to keep all those bodies. We just want to split them. And now we can hide this center rectangle line. All right, so now our model is now cut it into three bodies. So if you now select the center body right here and we click at isolate, you can see that this is just one body right now. And now we're going to click at the delete body option. We're going to delete this body right here. Click at delete bodies and click OK. All right, now we're going to mirror our body. And we're going to mirror it about this blue surface right here. We're going to click at the bodies to mirror option 
and we select our body right here and click OK in order to mirror this body right here. All right, now we're going to mirror this entire geometry. Therefore, we click at mirror again. We're going to use this blue face right here as our mirror face. Now we're going to click at the bodies to mirror option and we're going to select each of those three bodies right here. All right, now click OK. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to combine all those bodies together. So click at the combine option. We're going to select each of those bodies. Make sure that the operation type is set to add and click OK. And there we go. We just created a beautiful chain model. All right, now I want to apply a metal material, but I want to make sure that the reflections uh, on the model are looking better. And therefore, I'm going to adjust my scene a little bit. And I'm going to apply a basic scene and backdrop studio room 2, for example. And we're going to change the material into a satin finish stainless steel, just like this. Yes, this looks pretty good. Now we can edit our scene if we want, and we can change our background into a white color, for example. And now it looks pretty, pretty good. Now we can add shadows. We can add an ambient occlusion. And if you look to our model, it looks very, very beautiful right now. All right, guys, we just completed our endless J model. Now, I hope you like this free video. Now, if you want to learn more, I highly recommend to check out my other videos as well. Uh, you can find many videos on LearnSolidWorks.com. And next to that, I also want to invite you to attend my free SolidWorks workshop. And in this workshop, I'm going to show you how to become a SolidWorks Pro in days without boring practice, expensive training classes, or any pointless theory. So make sure to check it out as well. You can find more information about the workshop under this video. And for now, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll talk to you very soon.